What's going on everybody? Jeff Holiday here and frequently on this channel I have a tendency to talk about uh, quacks and pseudoscientists, uh, scam artists, snake oil salesmen, that kind of thing and it can get kind of frustrating and it's important. It's important that we, we do this because this is what I feel really passionate about. This is what I love. But as time goes on and more and more of these horrible practices are exposed, it can kind of weigh on you, weigh on you a lot because it seems like a lot of times these people don't get punished. Well, today we're going to switch gears a little bit and I'm going to tell you a few stories about some quacks that did get caught and did get punished. Now, whether they got punished enough, uh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll see as we go along with these stories, but at least hopefully this can brighten things up a little bit. Sometimes the system works and for others, uh, who, who might be peddling some rather dangerous stuff, uh, it, maybe this is a cautionary tale for you <coughs> that, uh, you know, there are consequences to your actions. So let's get started. Now the first one I'm going to talk about today is Donald L. McNay, 62, of Leesburg, and he was sentenced to two years for an aloe vera case. Now, th this one is kind of crazy. He's an orthopedic surgeon, is convicted of defrauding cancer patients by treating them with an unapproved aloe vera substance. Now, it, it wasn't just that he was like, hey, we, we just gotta rub some aloe vera on your cancer. Oh no, 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 no. See, this is what the problem is. Potter sentenced McNay to two concurrent five-year prison terms and suspended three of those years. Four of McNay's patients, who were all terminally ill and were desperately seeking an alternative treatment for their diseases, died shortly after he injected them with an unapproved aloe vera substance in his Manassas clinic in 1997. McNay charged thousands of dollars for the treatments. His state license to practice medicine was subsequently revoked. Yeah, you, you heard that right. Four. Four terminally ill people, he injected them with aloe vera. And, I mean, they were terminally ill, they were going to die anyway, but what the hell was this dude thinking? Potter, likening McNay to a 21st century medicine man, said he was concerned that McNay had showed no remorse for his actions and, in fact, had demonstrated an amount of arrogance throughout the trial. You wanted to relieve them of their wallets and their life savings, Potter said to McNay. You intentionally deceived these people and intentionally defrauded them. There can be no more vulnerable victims of a scam than these patients. McNay, speaking softly to Potter, said he was duped by a Maryland researcher who assured him that the aloe vera treatments were approved and had met with success. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, so, so some guy, some guy, uh, said, yeah, if you inject people with aloe vera, um, it'll totally cure their cancer. Keep in mind, so this guy, uh, McNay here, he was an actual orthopedic surgeon, and his defense was, some dude told me that this would work. Let that sink in for a minute. In July, a federal grand jury in Baltimore indicted McNay, his Baltimore distributor, and an Oklahoma manufacturer on charges of conspiracy, fraud, and introducing an unapproved drug into interstate commerce. McNay will face 66 counts in the federal case, which is slated to begin in March. Oh, but the story doesn't really stop there. You see, it wasn't just McNay who was doing this. He was partnered up with uh, two, two organizations. There was one called Tea Up, which is also the name of the aloe vera drug that they were trying to peddle. And that was headed up by President Alan J. Hoffman, and then an Oklahoma cosmetic laboratory owner, Otis M. Hennessy. Now, when I was looking through this, I couldn't really find a whole lot of what happened to Otis M. Hennessy. Seems like he pretty much got off scot-free as far as I could tell. But Alan Hoffman, however, was actually sentenced to 46 months in the aloe vera case. So, there's at least that. So next up, I'd like to talk about Hulda Clark. I, Hulda passed away in 2009, but... She was a rather prolific author, and uh, let's take a look at her books real quick before I tell your story. Uh, for instance, we have The Cure for All Diseases with Many Case Histories. Oh, fascinating. She also has uh, Dr. Clark's he Healthy Recipes, Beneficial Foods, The Cure for All Cancers, The Cure and Prevention of All Cancers, The Cure for All Advanced Cancers. Wow, she must be a, a prophetess of, of how to defeat uh, the cancer, right? So Hulda, she was not a doctor, and she actually lied quite a bit about her degree. Her PhD she got in zoology. Her thesis was on crayfish, so just uh, keep that in mind. Now, the, the really fascinating part about her 
is her medical claims were hilarious. I, sure, she had basic things, you know, you need to have a healthy diet. Uh, there was a certain type of new science she was talking about called homeography, which is an electronic analog of homeopathy. Eh? Um, believed in detoxes. She also believed that people had lots of parasites. It sounds kind of familiar to some other people we know. But my favorite one, she had a device that she invented called the zapper and she claimed that she could zap away your cancer pew, 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 pew. like she could use this little electronic device and she'd use it on you and it would just like like a disintegration ray inside your body <laughs> she ran a clinic over in indiana and part of a sting operation which i really wish i wish more of these quacks would be subjected to sting operations my god but uh, an, an undercover investigator went in she told the investigator that he had the HIV virus, but that he didn't have cancer. She said she could cure HIV in three minutes, but it would come back unless it came back for six more treatments. Hmm. Getting repeat business on threat of AIDS. That's, uh, that's some classy shit. And when it was uncovered that it was a sting operation and she was about to get in serious, serious trouble, she fled. She went on the lam. Now she was caught in San Diego, California, and the only reason she didn't go to jail was because the court was not able to provide her a speedy trial. So she got off effectively. But where did she go? Mexico. She went to Mexico and started doing the same shit. In February 2001, Mexican authorities inspected Clark's Century Nutrition Clinic and ordered it shut down as the clinic had never registered and was operating without a license. But it gets even worse. You see, <laughs> after Mexico told her she needed to stop, well, uh, she then was operating a restaurant and leasing housing for patients at her Tijuana clinic. She kept doing it, kept doing it. This article uh, from the San Diego Union Tribune described a couple whose daughter, suffering from spinal muscular atrophy, was treated for 10 months by Clark at a cost of approximately $30,000 without improvement. And like we've heard so many times before in many of my videos, uh, the, the mother commented, People don't understand why we stayed so long, but Holda Clark did a very good job preying on us. So I know what you're thinking, like, wait, 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 this video is supposed to be about people getting their comeuppance and, and actually getting punished. Well, she got punished insofar as she had to get pushed out of the country and fleeing to Mexico, where she still continued to do it. However, her comeuppance is this. A woman who said that she could use an electronic device to zap and kill cancers. Um, yeah, she, she died of bone cancer. Irony! Now for our next one, we're gonna go to California. And uh, this is this is actually a rather famous one. California doctor gets 14 years in selling cancer cure of herbs and beef flavor. Mm-hmm, this one's juicy. See, here we have Dr. Christine Daniel. And she was selling bogus cancer cures to dozens of victims. So, duping patients out of $1.3 million by selling them herbal remedies. <laughs> and I'm sorry. Uh, I, I think this, this clip actually sums it up rather well. What are cures look like? The high cost sure didn't come from the packaging. A plastic soda bottle with a handwritten label that looked like something you might find on a shelf in a garden shed. You see, she had this tendency to tell people they needed to avoid chemotherapy and painkillers and instead charge them up to $100,000 for six months of her unique treatment. She claimed her concoction had a 60 to 80% chance of success in overcoming advanced stages of cancer and could also cure diabetes and multiple sclerosis. But her remedies, which she claimed had been tailored individually for each patient, were completely bogus. Experts testified that the potion, made up of sunscreen preservative, beef extract flavoring, and various other ingredients would have no effect on cancer or any other diseases. It meant that patients were deprived of proper treatment and had to endure the final months of their lives in absolute agony. Gosh, that sounds really familiar. I wonder who that could be. <clears throat> hey, you there, terminally ill cancer patient. I know, I know. Life is tough. It's very hard. You're struggling with chemotherapy. But what you really need to do, you need to stop doing all of the things that your doctors are telling you to do and instead drink this magic woo-woo water that I made. 
containing sunscreen and beef ramen flavor packets. Fantastic. The court heard from 28 former patients and family members of cancer sufferers who had died as a result of the ruse. Daniel told Paula Middlebrooks, who she charged nearly $60,000, that she was free from the disease after five months of treatment. But in reality, her breast cancer had spread and she died soon after. And a 22-year-old woman suffering from neck lymphoma was told by Daniel not to bother with radiation or chemo. She might have been cured, but instead, she died. So, it's very sad, but at least we can take comfort at the fact that this monster is going to be in jail for 14 years. Not bad. This next one I find really interesting because I, I've not yet made a video specifically on the pH scale scam. Because it is a scam. Uh, your your alkali or acidic nature of your body. It's, it's all a bunch of hocus pocus bullshit. But it's kind of nice to know that it, one of the biggest proponents of it actually did get punished for pushing a bunch of bullshit. Best-selling PH Miracle author heads to jail. Ooh, that sounds good. The author of the popular PH Miracle book series will spend the next five months in jail after admitting that he illegally treated patients at his Luxury Valley Center ranch without any medical or scientific training. Robert O. Young was taken into custody in a Vista courtroom Thursday morning. He had been convicted last year on two counts of practicing medicine without a license and pleaded guilty earlier this year to two additional felony counts. The 65-year-old Young didn't speak during the hearing, which marked the end of a three-year criminal case that highlighted his controversial theories and the pricey treatments he offered to seriously ill or dying patients, who in some cases were given intravenous fluids mixed with baking soda at $500 a pop. During the trial, Young's then-attorney Paul Finkst argued that Young was under attack because he espoused alternative beliefs. He said people sought Young's help precisely because he was not a doctor, but rather a naturopathic practitioner. And okay, yes, there is some responsibility that people have to pay attention to because they're deciding not to go to an actual doctor, but at the same time, if you're selling yourself as an actual competitor to doctors, that's kind of your screw up too, buddy. Now, it's unfortunate that this guy only got five months, but the important part about it is this is a very, very popular, popular pseudoscientist, a very popular quack selling his snake oil bullshit. So at least it's a high profile case. In my opinion, because it's a high profile case, he probably should have gotten more to set an example, but I'll, I'll take whatever win we can get because this is a, an ongoing struggle. For every one of these, that get put into jail, there are probably like hundreds more out there still preying on people. I know because I make videos on them. Now for this next one, we're gonna go over to jolly old England where quack doctor who claimed he could cure cancer and told Kate Middleton she should burn her bra to avoid acidity in the breasts faces jail after being found guilty of fake medical claims. Ooh, this is spicy. So Errol Denton 52, there he is right there, giving, uh, giving some, some peace signs. Uh, 52 charged 650 pounds for consultations, booked through his website, offered to put clients' blood under a microscope to assess their health problems. He claimed he could cure cancer with a blend of diet tips and blood analysis. He's convicted of two counts of engaging in unfair commercial practices and one of selling food not of the quality demanded. So what's the, what's the big problem with this? Why is this guy uh, in so much trouble? Denton claimed to be a doctor, despite having no medical qualifications, and rented a Harley Street office at $150 per hour for consultations. He was caught after an undercover trading standards officer was given a bottle of colloidal silver to drink after a test purchase. Colloidal silver. If you're not aware of what colloidal silver is, um, there, <laughs> there was this, this famous case of uh, this one guy who, who, who was so obsessed with drinking it, well, um, yeah, he turned into a purple Papa Smurf. Mm. Denton told the undercover officer it would help her immune system and clean your blood before telling her she had dislocated her shoulder. And as far as the Kate Middleton thing, it was on his website where he, he very, very loudly proclaimed that she needed to, 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 to burn her bra because it, it, bras are going to build up the acidity in your boobies and uh, you got you to free them, free the breasts and let that blood flow naturally. Why am I touching myself so much? Anyway, uh, our next story, we're going to be going over to China, and we've got two more left. Uh, this one in China, and then a rather notable and very serious one. And these are going to be a little bit heavy, but bear with me. Quack doctor freed from prison, jailed after killing again. Oof. 
And this is back in 2014. This guy, this guy is a monster. Hu Wen Lin, who claimed to be an omnipotent doctor, but dehydrated a man to death, was sentenced on Wednesday to 15 years in prison for illegally practicing medicine. Hu, 65, began his so-called healing activities while serving a life sentence for killing a businessman, but was stopped in 1996 after 13 of his patients died. That sounds kind of odd, but I'm pretty sure this is a translated page, so we'll try and work this one out. Who was freed but jailed again in 2000 for illegally practicing medicine after three more patient deaths, including the then mayor of Luohu City in Henan. On that occasion, Hu was sentenced to 15 years, but he was again given his freedom early, the newspaper said, and mounted a health retreat for 12 patients last year. A 22-year-old college student, Yun Zuyang, a devotee of traditional Chinese medicine, died after taking a substance provided by Hu at the event. Hu theorized that all diseases are caused by water, and patients needed to be dehydrated with a magic medicine using powerful salts, the newspaper said. Huh. Dehydrated salts. Where have I heard that before? Who found the student's official autopsy result at Wednesday's trial hard to swallow? The newspaper reported claiming that he frequently consumes 1.5 kilograms of the salt and liquid mixture without any ill effects. Ugh, that's strange. I'm claiming you can drink a whole bunch of salt to no ill effects, but then you're prescribing it to other people and they get all screwed up. Weird, where have I heard that elsewhere? Okay, I got a fart. Okay, ooh. I just pooped. Lu Wei, one of Hu's protégés, who promoted him online as a medical master who could cure diabetes and AIDS, was also sentenced to 11 years in prison by a court in Henan in central China. It is not clear why Hu had not been charged with murder in connection with the medical cases. His 2000 conviction resulted in an official system of medical licensing being established in China, which at least there's that. That's good. Because prior to this case, and this really was one of the landmark cases in China that made sure they needed to be very careful on who was being given the authority to act as a doctor. So in this way, it ultimately ended up being a net good, but still, oh, it's heavy stuff, man. Heavy, heavy stuff. I, I tried to find like the official body count of that doctor, couldn't find it. But it's interesting because I think at this point, he's probably going to have spent well over half his life in prison just because he keeps dehydrating people. He believes in his quackery so much that as soon as he gets out, he just does it all over again. What's that definition of insanity again? So last but not least, this is one that I've actually had quite a few people who are into alternative health uh, wanted me to talk about. They're like, well, Jeff, if you're talking about all this quackery, why don't you talk about this doctor who was using real medicine and uh, really hurt people. What about this? What about this? Okay, let's talk about it. Detroit area cancer doctor gets 45 years for fraud. This is a man by the name of Dr. Farid Fata. Now, this story is rather sad. Uh, he, <laughs> this is, this, this it was an extraordinary scheme where he basically was getting millions from insurance companies while putting hundreds of patients through needless treatments that wreck their health. I'll let the article say it because it's good. they're going to be able to say it way better than I can because I honestly get really pissed off when I read this story. U.S. District Judge Paul Borman heard stories of brittle bones and fried organs as patients chillingly described the effects of excessive chemotherapy at the hands of Dr. Farid Fatah. The government identified 553 victims along with insurance companies, Medicare, and insurers paid at least 17 million. The patients were men and women, old and young, of every race, religion, creed, profession, temperament, and understanding, prosecutors said in a court filing. Fatah's clinic, Michigan Hematology Oncology, had seven offices in the Detroit area and a related business that performed tests to look for cancer. Testifying for the government, two experts from Harvard Medical School said they were troubled after looking at a small portion of patient files. So what exactly did he do? <sighs> this jackass started telling people that they had cancer when they didn't have cancer. Yeah. Also, he could basically give them chemotherapy and get a ton of money in the process. He basically committed a massive amount of fraud, maybe one of the largest, if not the largest, cases of medical fraud in current contemporary history because he was convincing healthy people that they were sick, then convincing them that they needed to take a very aggressive and uh, honestly, chemotherapy is not 
it's not fun. <laughs> it's bad for you. It's bad for you. But if there is no other treatments available, if that's all you have, if somebody tells you you're going to die unless you at least try this, that's when people do chemotherapy. It's for the most aggressive of cancers. So he's telling healthy people like, you're dead. You are dead unless you do this. In fact, he actually told this one woman that she had multiple myeloma, which requires a lifetime of chemo to even be able to survive. And this is this is how he got caught. Hours after the first round of chemotherapy that was administered by his clinic, she broke her leg. And she went in and saw some doctors, and she mentioned that she, she was diagnosed with cancer. When they ran her tests, she had no evidence of cancer whatsoever. None. But it's not only just that. He didn't just convince like healthy people that they were sick, but the amount of chemo that he was pumping into people was dangerous. Incredibly dangerous. The whole concept of this is horrifying. So yeah, 45 years for fraud. And you know what? Good. I, I think they should have made it a life sentence. I mean, this is pretty much a life sentence anyway. Uh, he's, he's, he's old enough he's going to die in prison. But just to really hammer it home that this is inappropriate. That if you are a medical professional, you have responsibilities. And those responsibilities are immense. You, you have people's lives in your hands and you have to take care of them. Now, what makes a lot of these worse than others is this. If it's just some naturopath practitioner, some homeopathist, you can almost forgive them for just being dumb. You know, they, they get this idea in their head, this magical idea in their head that this alternative treatment that, that they've, they've found or they've discovered, this is the new revolution. This is the new way things are going to be. This is like this unknown, unearthed secret that I found and then it turns out that they're wrong. Like, okay, you can kind of forgive that to a little degree. They still have to be punished and they still should be held accountable for, for what they do. But some of these people that I have in this list are doctors, real doctors with real medical degrees. And they still did so. All the same, the truth is this. The vast majority of actual real medical personnel are good people. I truly believe that. And they are experts in their field and that because of the nature of how people will prey on you, you are much more likely to get good treatment and somebody that you can actually trust by going to a doctor than any of the naturopath, weirdo, homeopathic practitioners. You're still better off with that. But that isn't to say that doctors can't be shitty too. So if for any reason, any reason whatsoever, you're given a very grim diagnosis and it, this isn't somebody that you trust implicitly, go get a second opinion. There's no reason not to. Just go and do it. Especially if this is talking about something like like the end of your life. Like this might be the end. You might die from this. Yeah, dude, go talk to another doctor immediately. Because you have to protect yourself. First and foremost, step one, get proper medical treatment and proper medical analysis. Step two, if you're not absolutely certain that this person is on the level, get another one. That's what you do. So... With that in mind, I hope in some ways this is a good teachable moment of how some of these people necessarily operate and how you need to be critical of everything, especially when it comes to something as important as your health. Because it's maybe it's a spoiler alert, but you only get one life. <laughs> you only get one life. You only get one body. There's no takesy backsies, uh, and you have to protect yourself. And you got to protect your kids. You got to protect your family. You know, we're all we're all in this together, but we have to have personal responsibility. But also, that with with enough work, with with the diligent the diligent work of people watching out for dangerous quackery, that sometimes the good guys win, and sometimes these giant aggressive predatory pieces of garbage do finally get their comeuppance, and they get thrown in jail. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like to, please check out my live show, The YouTube Saints. Uh, links in the description. We do a show on Wednesdays on Twitch and a show on YouTube on Friday uh, as well. Please, by all means, go and check out my Patreon. If you feel like kicking me a couple of bucks for the things that I do and the effort I put in, I'd very much appreciate it. Thank you. Anyway, I hope your family is well and I hope you are well and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.